We hear in this morning's gospel passage that large crowds were following Jesus. Jesus has achieved celebrity status. Jesus was a brilliant and provocative speaker. He spoke with authority. He healed many people of various illnesses. He drove out demons, fed hungry crowds, and even raised several people from the dead. Wherever Jesus went, crowds were sure to follow. But Jesus was not looking for fans, for spectators. Jesus was looking for disciples, for, he, for people who would set aside their own agenda, people who would set aside their own lives to follow him. Jesus expected total commitment from his disciples. It is this total commitment to which Jesus points in the strong words he uses in today's gospel. Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Now, most scholars agree that Jesus is using Semitic hyperbole. That is the exaggeration that the Jews used for effect to make a point. Nonetheless, in their day and in ours, the word hate is jarring to our ears. But let me describe a time when I use the word hate, which is illustrative of what Jesus is getting at. It happened during my late childhood. I was the fourth of six children. My next oldest sibling was my sister. Jean was four years older than me. On more than one occasion, I said to her, or more likely screamed at her, I hate you. And I meant it. These unkind, deplorable words were uttered when I was frustrated, when I was angry or disappointed. I hate you was uttered when she used her size and strength to overpower me as she seized access to the one and only TV in our house. I hate you was uttered when she refused to play a game with me, leaving me bored and lonely. And when her teasing awakened insecurities in me, with furrowed brow and scrunched shoulders, I growl, I hate you. Now, let me be clear. In these moments of hating my sister and speaking these harmful words, I was not acting as a good disciple of Jesus. Jesus doesn't teach his disciples to rage against what oppresses them. But rather, he teaches them to submit to the power of God's light and love. And in time, his faithful disciples will increasingly be guided by that light and love as they respond to the offenses that inevitably come in our lives. And Jesus doesn't teach his disciples to reject others when others disappoint them, when they don't meet their needs. By God's grace, disciples of Jesus eventually come to realize that no person, no created thing will ever satisfy their deepest longings. 
after vainly chasing after people, possessions, and experiences for years. St. Augustine famously came to the realization, our heart is restless until it rests in God. Putting down others, hating those who are different, is not the way of Jesus' disciples. That's not the way we find our self-worth by putting others down. Disciples, by God's grace, come to realize they have inherent worth. They were loved into existence by God. And in time, disciples find themselves more and more loving of what God loves. They love themselves. They love others and everything that God has made. Now, when one is committed to being a disciple of Jesus, one should expect that Jesus will change them. Jesus will transform them. When we commit ourselves to Jesus, we are getting on the potter's wheel and letting God, the potter, shape us and form us. Now, such transformation takes time. In fact, it occurs over the entirety of our lives. And I'm pleased to say that my sister and I have a good adult sibling relationship. We thoroughly enjoy each other's company. We sometimes holiday together. We love each other. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, says of Anglo-Catholics that Anglo-Catholics have a strong sense of the need to see Christian life as something that takes time, that evolves over a period. Change and growth in the Christian life is symbolized by this recurring journey of the Christian year as we rehearse again and again what Christ has done and what Christ calls us to. On this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we listen yet again to Jesus' teaching regarding discipleship. We listen again as Jesus offers demanding words, calling would-be disciples to total commitment, putting no one and nothing before him. He speaks these words as he makes his way to Jerusalem, where in total commitment to his Father and to his Father's will, Jesus gives up his life on the cross that we might share in his life, in his life eternal. So as disciples of Jesus, as members of St. Barnabas, to the degree that we are totally committed to follow Jesus, we can expect transformation. We can expect that we will be changed. We will be changed as individuals, and we will be changed as a community. We can expect that by God's grace and our total commitment, we will love each other. We can expect to become more Christ-like and drawn ever more fully into Christ's life and Christ's mission. The mission action plan process, which we have begun at St. Barnabas, 
aligns very much with what we hear in today's reading today. We will commit ourselves to adult faith formation. That is what it takes for us as individuals to become disciples of Jesus. We will commit ourselves to reshaping parish culture to enable ministry. That is, we will commit ourselves as a community of faith to more and more fully become the mystical body of Christ that the church is called to be. We will commit ourselves to fullness of life in the neighborhood, which is to commit ourselves to Christ's mission in the world. So please don't think of this mission action plan just as something that the diocese requires us to do. It is holy work. It is godly ordained work. It is a way of putting ourselves on the potter's wheel and letting God shape us. And in fact, our very gathering this morning is one of the vehicles that God uses to shape us, to form us. In the Eucharist in which we commemorate Jesus' total self-offering, we hear in the words from Eucharistic prayer B that we offer ourselves. We hear, we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. As disciples of Jesus, let us put our full trust in God alone and not on anyone or any created thing. And may we offer ourselves in total commitment to the way of Jesus. May we pray that we might be transformed becoming more and more like Jesus for the sake of his mission and for the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.